and welcome back to Devon Lee Design Studio. For those that don't know, my name's Nicole Reed, and today we are here for Dee Dee Stitchmas and the advent opening for day four. And we are working on Holiday Quaker by Leela Studios. So let's get started. Good morning everybody and I hope everybody is well and rested today. It is quarter past 10 here on the 17th of December 2020. We're here to work on Holiday Quaker by Leela Studios. Um, yesterday when I left you, I left you with a little bit of a boo-boo. I have since fixed that up and we're moving on to this little snowflake here and possibly over to here. All right, so today I, uh, as I said yesterday, today I'm going to do Get to Know Your Needle Worker. Um, it has been a while since I did it. The last time I did it, I did it with Beck when we first started. Um, so over a year ago, and we've had lots of new subscribers since then. So I thought it would be a great opportunity to do that. Now, I've searched up all the tags and all the rest of it. So today it is just about getting to know me, where I live, da 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 da. Most of you probably already know this, but some of you may not. So um, I'm gonna do some stitching, I'm gonna do that. Uh, we've had a little bit of a hiccup on the uh, silks for you. Now I got the parcel, I knew what it was, I put it in a drawer, I didn't open it up until the first, uh, till the 14th, sorry, um, to the first day. And I've just been looking for the numbers and pulling them out. I didn't even think to count them and check. I didn't even think to open it when I got it and count them and check. And basically I've got to day four and I don't have it. So I've sent a message off to Joe. They're really great. They'll sort it all out and all the rest of it. I've had, I, I've never had any issues with them before. So I'm positive that they will sort it all out. And then tomorrow we'll just move on to day five. And when day four comes in, I will do a little video and show you about that. So uh, talking about tomorrow's uh, video, um, I am just going to do a standalone a floss tube tomorrow. I'm going to skip the stitch with me tomorrow. I have a couple of appointments and I really don't, um, I really can't squeeze it in. So I figured I'd just do the floss tube, which I'm actually going to um, record very early in the morning tomorrow. Um, and then on Saturday, I thought I'd spend a little bit longer with you and we can just do like a whip and chat. So um, if that's something that you'd like, I could possibly do it live if you want. Um, and we can have a conversation in the... Um, I'll make a decision tonight whether I'm going to do that live or not. So, because that makes it um, nice and easy. And then you can join in the conversation as well. So, as I said, we're going to be working um, today on the snowflake. I finished off the um, off the, the little error that I had. As you can see at the top, I'll just move that camera up so you can see. It's all fixed and sorted now. So, we're all good to go. Um, I have all my needles um loaded up the colors that we are going to be working with in the next couple of days um today we're going to be working with dmc 932 it is a called for color it is called antique uh yep antique blue light so um as you know i swapped this color out it was that was a little bit darker than this one um i just wanted that to stand out a little bit more and this one has a little bit more blending going on so i thought that i would try something a little bit different i have these threads from cosmo so i will just bring the camera out a little bit Look at all my mess in there. So I have these beautiful um, threads from Cosmo. They are called Shabom Dharma. Um, I'm not sure that's exactly how you um, pronounce it, but that's it there. They are a Cosmo thread. As you know, I am going to be stocking the Cosmo threads. Um, Tia has had a, good, a bit of a go at these. She's using um, some of these in um, Night Garden, her Chatelaine. Um, and so far she's liking them. Um, she's just, yeah, she's testing them out for me. Um, I've not used them myself yet. Um, so I've got that, that, all the different colors. So you can see there's pinks and yellows and there's golds. That's sort of a, a clearish sort of one. Then there's a white, um, this one sort of fell apart, but this one is a white. They feel very silky. Um, and they don't seem to look like they fray too much um but i as i said i haven't used them. this one 
may have got hold of she fixed it for me <laughs> anyway um, and you can see there I've got a blue one so I've got a couple of blue ones here that I, I've got and I'm thinking that I'm going to put them um, through the snowflakes so I'm just going to put one strand over the top um, to just give it a little bit of sparkle and not on every stitch so just randomly throughout the um, throughout it and this one looks like a sort of a clear sort of one so I'm actually going to um, put that over the top of the white ones just to give it a little bit of sparkle just to go with the fabric now these are polyester 100% polyester um, and they are used for embroidery so and they're made in Japan by the Cosmo um, by uh, Leeson I, I'm not sure how you Leeson I don't know <laughs> Anyway, hopefully that's clear enough you can see there so it's by that corporation and it falls under the banner of uh, Cosmo and I've got um, a red one here that's very Christmassy looking we've got some gold ones as well so these ones I'm, I'm going to use to um, incorporate into some of the snowflakes just throughout and these are um, these are uh, it doesn't tell me what these are, whether, it, but they're like a, um, they almost look like yeah, a twill. Okay, very similar. So I've got a silver one there. This is a white one. Then I've got a silver and gold metallic as well. Okay, so um, I'm going to test them out on this, this one. I haven't had a chance to test them, so I thought I'd give it a go on this because we've just got a couple of snowflakes throughout and I thought it would just give them a little bit of sparkle. And these ones here, I thought I could put a little bit of the gold in as well. But as I said, not on every um, single cross, just scattered throughout just to give it a little bit more sparkle. All right, so the first colour that I'm using today is 932. Then we're going to be jumping over down here, um, back down to the bottom, and we've got a couple of snow, uh, snowflake down here to do, and then I'm finished the snowflakes, and then I've got um, this motif over here, which is this large one. So we're going to be starting to bring in some red now. So I had to wait before I got to that one because I had to order some more cypress in. So I've got the cypress here, and we're also going to be using um, that, and that's by Weeks Dye Works and i swapped um, that out for cucumber so the chart calls for cucumber but i'm using cypress very similar in color um, the next color that we're going to be using is the gentle arts claret this is a call for color so they are going to look really nice together all right so let's get a bit of a move on and get some stitching done all right so we are as i said we're going to do get to know the needlework um worker tag i just need to tuck in a little bit move those threads out of the way for now <clears throat> hopefully you've got a cup of tea or coffee or a beverage of your choice depending where you are you might be having a little bit of a wine um, if you're in the northern hemisphere so um, I have my tea and everything and I'm ready to go and we're going to get stitching so the first question is where do you live I live in Australia in Queensland in a little town called Kingaroy it is famous for peanuts we have a peanut van here uh, people come from all over to go to the peanut van and they buy all the different sorts of peanuts so that is our main industry here um, we also are a farming district as well we are in a part of um, Queensland we're in southeast Queensland um, western southeast Queensland and because um, we're about three and a half hours from the coast um, inland so we're a little bit west but we're still in southern Queensland and we're in a region called the South Burnett we have some lovely wineries and all that sort of stuff here as well uh, not that I do wineries but I have been told we have some lovely wineries here I just got to count one two three four five six um yeah so it's a lovely place I've lived here um originally I was from New South Wales I was born and bred in Sydney and I lived all over New South Wales and um then in 1997 uh, I 96 rather I moved up here and uh, to the Gold Coast which is where um, Tia lives and that's about three and a half hours from where I'm living now I lived there for quite some time and then in uh, two th early 2000 and um, 2004 no 2005 we moved up to the South Burnett and we've been here ever since love it it's been a great place to raise our children 
um, it's got great schools and it's just a fabulous place to be um, for those that are living uh, in Australia and know um, have heard of the area and all the rest of it Sir Bjolke Peterson also was from this area as well so he was the Queensland Premier for many many years um, not a lot of people like him but this is where they're from <laughs> So um, he's probably about an hour, his family's um, property is about an hour from us. Um, so yeah, so Lady Flo, famous for her pumpkin um, scones. And I'm just incorporating some of my DNA, a piece of my hair, <laughs> into the chart. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's where I live. I love it. Uh, we own our own property here as well. We've got a small... Um, smallish house on a large block so it's a really nice place to live all right so the next question is um i've just got my computer a little bit over so i actually have to um <laughs> look down from my glasses because uh, otherwise i can't see it because it's too far away the next question is uh what do you do for a living okay so for me i am a stay-at-home mum but I'm a stay-at-home work mum. I actually work from home. I have a small small quilting a patchwork shop slash cross-stitch shop. Um, start, well, the cross-stitch side of it is starting to build, but I've been a patchwork um, shop. Just a small one, just your basic supplies because my predominant business is my long-arm quilting. That's what I've been doing for the last uh, 10 years. I am a jack-of-all-trades, master at none. No. Um... <laughs> I, you know, I don't have um, a tertiary education or anything like that. I left home um, very, very young and basically that meant that I had to work. So I had to leave school. Um, so basically I've just done lots of lots of little jobs, but my career now is in the um, craft industry. So I do crafting, I do YouTube, I do cross stitch, I do um, all sorts of stuff, anything that I can do. And I also teach as well run sewing retreats and all that sort of stuff so um the teaching has gone by the wayside and youtube has taken over for that because i can reach more people um and basically the problem was people were time poor people were working um that sort of stuff so the classes were a little bit hit and miss so um we decided that we uh my husband and i sat down one day and talked about it and we decided that we were going to do um we were going to do sewing retreats and stuff like that um i continued on doing um classes uh and then basically about four months after i started doing sewing retreats i m moved away from doing individual classes and then moved to doing weekends away where people could learn to sew and all that sort of stuff now we are also incorporating cross stitch um retreats as well so yeah, so that, that is uh, when it's not a COVID situation. That is actually quite a large part of my business. I do um, anywhere up to four of those a year, so every few months. Uh, we have about 20 people that stay, and we do them at the Bunya Mountains. And then the rest of the time, I uh, do quilting, and um, I also do handbag making, <clears throat> and project bag making and all that sort of stuff for um, cu custom orders so that is uh, generally a private order and um, then I make them up something so they'll come and pick fabric or they'll pick it online um, yeah and then I have the little patchwork shop attached to that which just has your basic supplies so things for quilting and stuff like that um, not a very big one I've probably only got about 200 bolts of fabric um, that's still a lot of fabric for such a small area but um, still not a lot in comparison to some of the other shops all right so that's what I do for a living uh, the next question is do you have any children yes I do I have four children uh, two of which have left home and I have um, several grandchildren as well I I'm just counting sorry I um, I have a 27 year old son who has been with his um you may as well say wife because they've been together for a long time um they have four kids and 
Then my uh, eldest daughter, she had a baby and I have that baby living with us who is now five and that is who I refer to as little M. So um, occasionally she makes an appearance. So yeah, so four kids and um, five grandkids. And I, um, and they range down to, well, I have the five-year-old living with me. She's about to start school. And then I have Savannah, who is 16. And then I have Nera Lee, who is 14, who thinks she's 44. Um, <laughs> she needs an attitude adjustment. <laughs> Even Mia said yesterday when she was being, Ray Ray is being naughty. I'm like, yes, Ray Ray is being naughty. And, and she just looked at me and said, she's got attitude. She goes, she's sassy. <laughs> I just cracked up laughing. <laughs> the things that Mia comes out with, I'm like, yes, she is sassy. <clears throat> so anyway, <laughs> um, that was quite hilarious. And... um gave us a bit of a giggle so yeah so she's been living with us for the last four and a half years and um yeah there's a story there but you don't need to know about that that's um yeah that's a long drawn out story and um some people are just not cut out to be mum so I've stepped in for her so she so that way um Mia didn't end up in the system or anything like that we just didn't want that for her she's such a gorgeous little girl and that would have destroyed her so um yeah, we have her living here and she brings a little bit of sunshine to our day every day and as I said she gave me a good giggle last night telling me that Neralee is sassy <laughs> and she's not wrong <laughs> um, but then again you know I'm a little bit sassy too so I'm not surprised now do you have any pets well if you've been here for the last couple of weeks you know we've got a new pet member uh, yes we do have pets I have a very grumpy cat called Snowy <laughs> that suffers from um, indoor anxiety so he doesn't come indoors he's an outdoor cat and then we have Arlo and Arlo is the newest member of the family she had joined us a couple of weeks ago um, and she has settled into the family very well she is a cheeky little pussy cat and of course one off then cheeky little pussycat very adventurous and um yeah loves playing with everybody and then we have four chickens and the girls are sort of free ranging um because it's a bit hot here at the moment i've got them free ranging out um in the yard just so they can get to really shady spots like under the house and stuff like that because it does get quite warm here so um just so they don't get fatigued or anything like that they are roaming around and they go visit the neighbours and all the rest of it but they are the only pets we have um that's all I can manage at the moment because 95% of the time I end up looking after them Neralee's not rating me very much at the moment because I'm making her do everything because she wanted the cat you want the cat you look after the cat <laughs> that is the motto at the moment all right so this is this is proving to be a little bit tricky and a little bit slow at the moment because this snowflake is just so random um and i'm just trying to make sure that i'm not buggering it up <laughs> but it is very random like because it's on two pages too it's probably not making much sense because it's actually over two pages um, I'm only going to work on page one today because two, page two is way over there and I can't reach it. So <laughs> I'll finish that off later. All right. The next question is, what are your other hobbies besides stitching? Okay. So, um, <laughs> not much. Uh, I do like to read, although my reading has been a bit lax, um, of the last few years. Um, but it looks like School of Magical Stitches is going to fix that problem for me because they've got a challenge and I like that challenge and I'm doing that challenge. So I've got 100 books to read next year. Um, some, um, some of them are going to be physical books. Some of them will be audio books so I can multitask. Um, yeah, so I like to read. Um, I have quite a, a bit of a library. Um, I don't necessarily read fiction. Um, I read a lot of non-fiction, so reference books, the things that I can learn from um, about all sorts of topics and stuff like that. I'm quite interested in nutrition and, um, you know, healing the body 
um, that through food and, and all that sort of stuff. So, um, you know, do I follow it? No, not really. Do I enjoy it? Yes, I do. That is a hole there, isn't it? Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, that's a very little hole. Um, uh, it was just a little bit, it's got a little bit of that uh, glitter on it, so it made it look like not a hole, and then it is a hole, and yeah, just making sure that everything's lining up. Oh. So, um, yeah, so I like to read a lot of those books, um, not necessarily self-help books, but just um, books that I can learn from and stuff like that, and, you know, like, about all sorts of um, topics, not just one topic you know what I mean so that doesn't really help you but um it's hard to say because I do read a lot of different um books on different topics so and then I do I do have you know your odd series that I've got here that I'll I'll what um read and watch <laughs> a bit hard to watch a book um and all the rest of it but um Charlene Harris's uh True Blood series is one of my favorite um and there's many others as well. I've just recently started reading The Discovery of Witches. Um, so that's been pretty good. I'm hoping to finish that series next year. Um, my daughter's just got uh, Lord of the Rings um, and The Hobbit. I got her a box set. Um, so I might even revisit that. I haven't read that since I was a... a um, Oh God, I would have been in my 20s, I think, when I read that. So I might uh, revisit that again. And then we've all seen the movies. I, I've never read the Harry Potter series, so I'm going to read that next year. Um, yeah, so I, I, I just really want to get back into reading, basically. Um, I've missed it. I enjoy curling up with a good book and so I'm going to be finishing each day um, with reading and everything next year. So, um, And during the day when I'm working and, and whatnot I can listen to audiobooks and and um, yeah and uh, so 100 books on my target is to read next year so that's uh, pretty exciting. I'm pretty happy about that. I was going over the genres last night. There's a few books that I've got on list that I want to um, read. So they will fit into the criteria. So, you know, two birds, as they say. And that'll just keep me motivated, keep me ticking along. It's a year-long challenge. So um, it's not going to... i just put that in the wrong spot. I need to go one up more. Which one was it? This one. All right, so yeah, that's the the book side of things. Um, I also like to horse ride, although I haven't done that um, in a few years. Probably about last time I went horse riding was about eight years ago. Um, that my um, horse passed away, and um, I haven't been riding since. So I had a ex polo cross horse. He was great, old Maxi. Uh, that it was like big dog. <laughs> um, he used to f he used to just hang out on the property. We didn't have fences or anything. He used to stand there watching TV. Um, yeah, he was quite funny. <sighs> All right, try that again. There we go. That'll work better. That will look more like a cross now instead of a rectangle. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's about it. And I love all things crafty, so. Um, if I can get my hands on it, I'm on it. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically anything that's uh, craft related. So, And I've incorporated that into my life by doing that every single day um, because it's my job. And some days, you know, I don't necessarily love my job. But then there are other days where I couldn't think of anything else I'd be rather doing. Um... You know, it's like anything, you get a bit frustrated and, you know, you get tired and all that sort of stuff. But, um, yeah, so crafting is my passion. And I've dabbled in all sorts of crafts and stuff like that. What is your favourite movie? 
Oh, that's so easy. That's just the Die Hard series. <laughs> I love it. Um, I do have other favourite movies, but I just, like, I love the Die Hard movies. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I just, I, I don't know. <laughs> They're my favourite Christmas movies. <laughs> I know that. Um, although someone was saying that Bruce Willis reckons it's not a Christmas movie. I'm sorry, but it's set at Christmas. Um, you know, like, come on, it's a Christmas movie. <laughs> and it's funny, you know, I've never seen them on the streaming, um, on any of the streaming apps. And um, that I always have to wait for it to come onto TV, like regular TV. I don't own the video. We don't have DVD players or anything like that. My husband and I aren't into collecting movies or, um, I collect enough books, he reckons. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so basically we don't have any movies or anything like that. We just rely on our streaming services. Prior to that, we used to rent them. Um, yeah, we don't collect them or anything like that. M my sister, on the other hand, oh my God, she could open up a video store. Uh, <laughs> she's got that many. All right. Um, and But then I've got, you know, like I've got other favourite movies as well, like uh, Practical Magic is one of my favourite movies as well i just read that was just recently um on one of the streaming apps so i watched that I sat down and watched that for lunch and um what other i'm pretty pretty much an action girl um i'm not right into the chick flicks my husband on the other hand is a chick flick um watcher <laughs> you know the and the comedies and stuff like that so um, I, by default I've watched a, quite a few of those but I always sort of gravitate towards the um, action movies and the latest action movies that I really like are the John Wick series um, yeah I'm right into those at the moment um, well in the last couple of years I've been watching those so um, and even my husband, because my husband says, will you pick the movie if I pick shit movies? Because that's what he said to me. And I'm like, fine, I will. And I picked the John, John Wick one. And then when it finished, she goes, wow, that was a really good movie. I'm like, I know, because I picked it. <laughs> it's, it's, always, it's always been very, very hard in this house to, to watch um, movies and all the rest of it. Because our tastes are just so, so different. And, um, yeah next question uh what is your favorite tv show friends big bang theory i like those comedies friends i've watched so many times i could probably sit there and and talk along with them and, with the script um i'm still i'm i have it on all the pretty much all the time um and I, at the moment i am re-watching big bang because i haven't seen the final series so don't tell me how, how it it ends um i was watching it on tv and then it was on at a time where i couldn't watch it and then um it was on the streaming apps and i watched up until um season 11 and then i'm like oh, come on it's season 12 wasn't on there so it came back on so i've started the series again i think i'm up to um season six at the moment so um i've just had that on the background while i'm stitching and um but friends, I've watched many, many times. I've watched it with my girl, every one of my girls. Um, I watched it when it was on TV. And um, a f my friend and I, we used to have marathons um, for it. So I've watched that many, many times. Charmed was another one that was a real favourite of mine too back in the day. Um, and I started watching the new Charmed. I'm actually, it's all right. Like... It's not the it's it's not the same. Granted, it's not the same, but it's got it's got its own legs. Um, that they probably could have done a little bit better, but um, it it has it has its own legs. Um, what else do I like? Oh, How I Met Your Mother. That was another one that I liked as well. Although I haven't, I've watched that whole series and I've not gone back to it. Um, so maybe not my favourite series, but it is one that I watched all of um but my top my top two big bang theory and friends 
Alright, stitching away. I've just got to count where I'm going. Otherwise I'm going to miss a stitch or something useful like that. Alright, what's the next one? What's your favourite book? Well, my favourite series is the True Blood one of recent years. My favourite book would be Anna Green Gables. Um, yeah, that's about it really. I like all books. Like, I don't really have an absolute 100% favourite. Um... Yeah, so I, I would have to go Anna Green Gables, it's always the first book that I recommend, um, and then my favourite series is uh, True Blood, I have all the books for that, um, I just recently watched the whole um, series as well, TV series, alright, where am I up to, there, this is a weird snowflake, this is a big one, and I'm sure I've made mistakes, but it's looking okay. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going across here now. Alright, so that is um, my favourite book. What is your favourite music? Okay, well, that I'm very eclectic with my music. My all-time favourite is Eagles and Credence Clearwater. Uh, then comes close third would be Fleetwood Mac. Um, Madonna. Is another one that I really like. Um, genre of music, um, pop, and also uh, what people like to call doof doof music. Um, in my doof doof music, my favourite um, is um, David Greta. Anything he does. Um, Gerard is, not I think you pronounce it Gerard or Duard. Um, yeah, so, um, I've got, yeah, they're probably people that you've never heard of, um, if you're not into Doof Doof music, as I, a lot of people call it. Um, I, a lot of people get surprised by that, that I like that sort of music. Um, the reason I like that sort of music is because, you know, when you go to big dance concerts and all the rest of it, it just the atmosphere and the... You can feel the music, like, <clears throat> it's hard to explain, you can feel the beat, you can feel the music, you can, and you get, like, I'm not into the drug side of it, so don't get me wrong there, but you just, you get lost in the music and stuff like that. I like it for that reason. Um, a lot of people don't understand that, um, but a lot of people do, because there's a whole industry on it. <laughs> um, but, you know, I like um, easy listening as well, and I also, um, just double checking, yeah, oh, look at that, I managed to get that right. <laughs> um, I like easy listening, like, my all-time favourite band is Eagles, I've seen them live and all the rest of it, my next all-time favourite band is Credence Clearwater, um, and then Fleetwood Mac, so I'm very eclectic in my music, um, I can listen to anything, it doesn't bother bother me. The only thing I really don't like listening to, especially first thing in the morning, is heavy metal. Um, doesn't float my boat at all. And, um, yeah, <laughs> I, and death metal, I don't, I just, I, like, how those people still have a voice box after they've sung a song is beyond me. But anyway, each to their own. Um, and I'm not judging you because you're into it, because it is each to their own. So, um, yeah, so my music is very, very eclectic. Um, I grew up in a household that was very, very eclectic, so it's probably why I am, um, you know, and I don't mind listening to, like, some of the 70s ones as well. So, like, ELO, um, Hot Chocolate, um, who's, who's the other ones? That, ABBA, of course, you know, like, who doesn't like ABBA? Um... Daddy Cool, all those sort of ones, um, The Doors, you know, all those ones that were around that time, I listened to all of those and enjoy all their music, um, 
I don't bar any music basically so yeah so but if I had to answer that question Eagles, Credence, Clearwater and Fleetwood Mac would be my top three then Madonna um, at number four and um, yeah sorry I'm just counting lost train of thought then and I just had like a couple of messages pop up as well on my phone my phone's at eye level today so I actually can just see them at the top like at the top of my vision so I'm just making sure that I'm getting these in the right spot because these are just random <laughs> they're probably not because as I said this is the end of page one and I'm going to leave that there because I will continue that on later All right so we'll just park that there that's out of the way then and we're going to pop down here to this little um, snowflake down here and again this is on the edge of the page too I've just got to thread my needle all right so that was uh and then oh this is a hard one i'm never able to describe this i'm never able to describe myself in one word but the one word that does come to to mind is determined i'm a very determined person if someone tells me i can't do something i like whether it be educational wise not rule breaking i'm just talking about life in general um you know you'll never amount to this or you'll do, 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 do whatever um i become very determined and like to prove people wrong <laughs> but hey you guys have been some of you guys have been around here for a while um some of you have been with me from the beginning what is the one word you would use to describe me leave it in the comments down below and I'm, I'm very interested to see how you <coughs> excuse me you can all put down croaky voiced old woman <laughs> um but yeah i'm really really curious to see what you guys what how you would describe me in one word so be nice <laughs> okay let's play nice in the sandbox um so for those that are coming across the channel for the first time and haven't been here for a while please be nice let's keep it clean down there um so yeah just leave me a comment down below and tell me what the one word is to describe me and i'm that yeah because that is um question um 10 as i said i would say i'm determined um in in because i can only use one word um, there's probably many words i would use to describe me <laughs> but i can only use one um so yeah so basically i would like to see what you guys think so and I know I'm opening myself up to to um, all sorts, but as I said, just play nice. If you've got something negative to say, you don't need to say it in the public forum, shoot me an email, okay? You can shoot me an email and say, say it all you want. Because, um, you know, I can delete that email and not worry about it. Um, you know, because that's your opinion of me and that's fine. Um, and that's none of my business it's none of my business to try and change your opinion of me that is your opinion and you're entitled to it um but yeah so um i would be really interested to see what you um how you perceive me in one word so leave that down down below all right so that is the end of the needle worker tag so that was just your basic get to know Tomorrow I actually have another one and it actually has some very interesting questions. So the next one is um, the chaotic tag is what I'm going to do. And this one goes a little bit deeper. So it wants to know things like culture and what you believe in and all that sort of stuff. So that there's 10 questions for that. So I'm going to do that again. Actually, I'm going to do that on Saturday. So, um, because tomorrow I'm doing a standalone um, floss tube, and then um, on Saturday I'm going to film um, day five. I will do the opening on my floss tube, and then on um, day six I will be back to stitch with me, and that's on Saturday. So I will be able to spend a little bit extra time with you then, and we can um, go over these next set of questions. And I've found a whole heap of other ones, so we might have that every single day. 
um, to um, see how we go and then yeah I mean some of them you know uh, <laughs> some of them are great <laughs> like I'm just looking at them now some of them are actually pretty funny well not funny I think they're funny but you might not but um, yeah just how you come how how you choose things and stuff like that so you have to tune in on Saturday for that one um, and we can go over that and I'm sorry the garbage truck is now coming down the road um, he's early this morning I thought I beat him but um, obviously I didn't um, so yeah he's just coming down the road so it's gonna be a little bit noisy um, and I'm gonna finish off this little snowflake which is on the edge of page one down to page four and um, yeah so we're almost finished this page we'll be on to Santa on Saturday because um, I'm planning on doing some more stitching on this um, this evening and um, getting some more stitches in and moving it along a little bit further and um, yeah so that'll be good All right, I can pretty much finish this snowflake I don't need to go to page um, 4 for that because it's exactly the same as this so I'm just going to follow that one there and get that finished so hopefully you enjoyed that um, get to know your needle worker um, as I said some of you have been here before um, and have already heard some of those answers um, but it's been over a year since I've done it and we've got lots of new subscribers and some of you may have been wondering about all of that although I'm pretty transparent about my children and stuff like that because I often talk about them they are my life um, I pretty much don't have a life outside crafting um, I don't you know I don't do a lot of stuff except for craft it is my passion I have no desire to go and sit and eat food elsewhere and do all that sort of stuff I don't have any family um, except my immediate family and um, so yeah so and Brendan's um, family live in a state so it's not as if we can pop out to dinner with them um, or anything like that although they were going to come up at Christmas but they've decided not to because they've had COVID break, outbreak and, and we've just basically told everybody to stay away because Mia is indigenous and her um, DNA is quite fragile and that is on doctor's advice um, to take care that she isn't exposed um, to anything unnecessary unnecessarily so um, they decided not to come up because they've had cases where they live in South Australia just recently and they don't want to take that risk and plus it also will knock us around as well because um, we're self-employed and if Brendan has to isolate then that's two weeks without any income I mean I bring some in I'll feed us but you know the other bills won't get necessarily paid um, so yeah so basically um, that's sort of where we were at and as I said I've got no um, family except for my immediate family and um, they are scattered all the ones that are here but then the other two live a fair distance away so we don't get to see them very often um, so yeah and um, I'm okay with that my daughter is very much like me Savannah she will just fall into a book and into her own world and she will just stay there I'm very much the same and a lot of people don't realize I'm actually a very shy and socially awkward person I'm okay if I'm sitting behind a camera and I'm okay mind you I can't speak in public I struggle speaking in public with public speaking um, but I can talk on camera and um, yeah and I don't do well in large crowds or anything like that I am so socially awkward like and <laughs> it's quite funny I go really quiet my husband on the other hand will talk flat out sort of like how I am on on camera and stuff like that I can just talk and talk and talk and talk it doesn't bother me um he's like that in uh, a crowd his nervous tick is to talk and ramble and my my nervous thing is to shut down and withdraw so it's great when we go to a party I just stand behind him <laughs> talking and I'm not noticed <laughs> and so it's quite funny <laughs> And, you know, like, he's... A couple of times I've gone to a party by myself and he's been quite surprised. He goes, 
But don't you need me anymore? I'm like, I'm dying on the inside, mate. I'm dying on the inside. But I, you know, I, you know, I am almost 50 years old. I need to at least go do something by myself. And I've always done that all my life. I've never gone anywhere on my own. I've always taken a wingman, so to speak, with me. Um, so yeah, but because I am actually quite a shy person, I'm not very talkative. I don't do well with, um, in social situations and stuff like that. I am just socially awkward. <laughs> I'm really bad I say inappropriate things. <laughs> no wonder my daughter does it. Oh, I'll thread that through because that's a little bit little. Um, yeah, <laughs> so no wonder she does it. She, she, she has a tick where she reads a lot of true crime and psychological thr thrillers and all that sort of stuff and... Um, she she likes to learn about the reason behind a serial killer and stuff like that. So she reads it from the, um, what do they call them? Where, like, profilers and stuff like that. So she reads it from that point of view. And every now and again, she'll blurt out a random, like, she, when she gets nervous, she'll just blurt out some random fact about a serial killer. <laughs> and, like, for the last couple of months, I've had to, like, a couple of years, I've said, right, Savannah, we're going to a situation please do not please do not blurt out a random fact about a serial killer i said i am so over explaining to people that you read it people are starting to get concerned <laughs> so it's been a running joke <laughs> she's done it when i've been on zoom she's come out and she got really nervous all of a sudden and then she's just blurted out a fact because she's the same she's very socially awkward probably i have been no help whatsoever in helping her overcome that but, um, yeah. But, yeah, she just blurts out random stuff. And I'm sort of the same. I suffer from foot and mouth. I, if, if anybody in the room is going to say something inappropriate, it'll be me. Um, guaranteed. Every time. I was once... I'll, 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 now, this is very crass, okay? I was at my... This was back in 1990, okay? I was at my... My grandfather had passed away. Um, he was 74 years old when he passed away. He fell out of bed and basically he he um, he got up in the morning, uh, one morning, and he fell. He got caught up in the sheets or something and he fell. And they had a very small house and um, he fell and hit his head. Well, they thought that everything was okay. Well, that was sort of the beginning of the end. And about eight months later, he passed away um, from a bleed on the brain that they didn't um, they didn't see. So this is what I was told. I don't, I don't know firsthand. I wasn't at the doctor's, um, but apparently he had a bleed on the brain from that fall. And that was what started a downward spiral. So from there, he started to lose his memory and all that sort of stuff. And it wasn't until like, I think a couple of months later, they realized that he, he'd had a bleed on the brain. Anyway, um, it got to the point where he passed away. Um, and that was the September of, um, of 1990 I was 20 years old and he was my father's dad so he was um, from Malta and he married an Egyptian lady um, and that was my nonna uh, and we spoke they spoke Italian um, he spoke nine different languages very 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 talented man in crafting and and stuff like that he um, I taught him how to do macrame and all that sort of stuff but anyway um, I, back to the crass story. We um, went to the funeral, done the funeral, came back to the to Nonna's uh, to his and Nonna's house, and um, basically we were there at the wake. And um, I got up from the table, sitting there with all my dad's cousins and aunties and uncles and, and all the rest of it, and we're talking away and all the rest of it. And I um, got up to go to the toilet. And my dad wasn't sitting at the table at the time. And um, when I went to the toilet, he jumped in my seat. And when I came back, without even thinking, the first thing I said, would you jump in my grave that fast? Now, imagine being in a room. <laughs> like, I can laugh about it now. And you know what? my grandfather was probably up there absolutely wetting himself because him and I used to, we were so cheeky and so sassy and basically used to always have these inside jokes 
and we'd be always sitting up the end of the table having little snide remarks and very sarcastic and all that sort of stuff. So he was probably up there absolutely wetting himself because he knew that I suffered from foot and mouth. Anyway, my father looked at me and goes, do you really think that that is appropriate? But he said it that loud that everybody turned around and looked at me. <laughs> so it just exacerbated the situation. And basically I've just like gone... I don't think it was necessary, but it's been said now, so we'll just sit down and we'll keep eating, hey? <laughs> and I just sat down. And that's sort of how I handled it and then just made no eye contact with anybody for the rest of the day. Um, but that's what I'm like. Like, I'll say something so inappropriate and in the most inopportune times. And the thing was, like, everybody had heard it, but everybody else except my father decided to ignore it. Um, and he was the only one that decided that he was going to make a big deal. Well, not a big deal, but still made it known that I said it. But truth be told, he said it too, because he repeated what I said in front of everybody. So, um, yeah, not that I'm passing the buck. I know I said it. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I'm like. They're the sort of th situations that I end up in. And I say the most inopportune things at, at such the wrong, 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 wrong time. So yeah, so needless to say, I don't go to many funerals, so I won't say that again, or many wakes. I'll go to the funeral, because everybody's sitting there nice and quiet, but um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's me, in a nutshell. So on that note, um, I'm going to continue on doing this. Uh, we've started on this motif down here. Um, if you're new here, welcome to the crazy world that is me. Uh, hopefully you've got to get to know me a little bit better. Tune in uh, tomorrow for my floss tube. You'll see my weekly update and also the opening of day five. Uh, we didn't, as I said, if you've only just joined us and um, we're looking for uh, number four, I'm just waiting to hear back from... Um, joe about the uh about number four so i'm sure she'll get onto that for me um and i'll open that up when it comes um so basically yeah that's it for me today i'm going to keep stitching on this don't forget to hit that uh subscribe button if you're new here don't forget to ring the little bell icon as well and that way you won't miss out on any future posts and um if don't forget to hit that like button give me some thumbs up people so i can see get seen and as always, the Buy Me Coffee link is down below. And I thank you, each and every one of you that have donated to that. That is greatly appreciated. Um, so that is it for me today. Have a great day, everybody. Happy stitching. And I'll see you all again tomorrow for Floss Tube. And then on Saturday for the next stitch with me. Bye for now.